and welcome to my podcast on real relationships. My name is Sophie Poisson and I am a relationship expert, international speaker and best-selling author of a book, You Have a Half. I decided to start this podcast because in my opinion, relationships are currently not being portrayed as what they really are, whether you're watching TV, the news or social media. Uh, the perception given to people is wrong and my aim is to talk about what happens in the real world, talk about real stories and listen to what real people think, do and go through as opposed to creating expectations of something that doesn't exist. I may not agree with everything that is said by my guests but it is their chance to express their opinions and their stories and today we are going to talk about relationships in the workplace with Tracy Jordan. Hi Tracy. Hi Sophie, thanks for inviting me along today. Oh, thank you for saying yes. Um, so can you tell us all a little bit about yourself please? Yes of course, I'm an HR consultant and I have my own H independent HR consultancy called Northwood HR based down in the south coast of the UK. Um, I'm, I'm an HR professional with over 20 years experience, a lot of it spent uh, specialising in the employee relations area. So as the name suggests, it's very much focused around relationships. Um, as part of that, I was also a team manager myself for about 10 years as well. So I've seen it both as an employee, uh, uh, a manager, and also as an HR person. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you know, we spent most of our life at work, uh, especially our awake life. And relationships uh, in the work environment is just as important as the relationship in the home environment. And also, sometimes we can't control those because, as you said before, you don't choose necessarily who you sit next to at work. Yes, that's, that's right. And yet it's so important uh, to try and have good relationships because you're spending a third of your life pretty much in the workplace. And if, if the relationships aren't good, the chances are you as an employee aren't going to be happy and your employer is not going to be getting the best from you. So what are the main uh, problems that you encounter, um, you know, that are relationships based in the workplace that are not working out? I think a lot of it comes down to when I've seen problems, it's normally as a result of communication not being as effective as it could be. Um, can I perhaps give you an example of a situation? Yeah, I've yeah, encountered? please do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I've, I've recently been working uh, with a couple of individuals. It's a manager and an employee who have fallen out. And um, so one of my clients asked me to go in and try and reach a solution. Um, just to give a bit of background, the, the manager hadn't been there in the organization for very long. And the employee was claiming that they were being bullied. However, they weren't able to give us very much concrete evidence of it. So we, we thought that it might be best in the first instance that we uh, conduct a sort of mediation session between them. We didn't feel that the relationship had completely broken down. We thought it was something from what we knew that was potentially solvable. Anyway, we, I met with both of the individuals, first of all separately, and then we got to a point that we could have them in, in a room together. And it, it turns out really that they completely fallen out with each other just because they weren't talking open and honestly to each other. And that meant that the new manager, she was probably keen to impress her staff and, and was being probably quite strict with some of the ways in which she was managing things. The employee themselves was under an awful lot of stress for a whole host of reasons and wasn't telling his manager about the pressure that he felt that he was being that he was under at the time. And as a result, her behavior was probably a bit too much for him given the pressure that he was under. And actually it escalated so that he felt that he was being bullied and he didn't know how he could carry on going into work. But actually once we were able to get the two employees chatting to each other openly um, and communicating about what was going on, we were able to get to a position that they agreed what the problems were and left the room. I mean, they, they literally physically had a hug before they left. Mm -hmm. And, and since then, things seem to be okay. And I think this is the thing, you know, in a, inverted brackets, normal relationship, you can kind of establish some sort of ground rules where you probably should in the work environment, but it doesn't really happen, does it? 
No, not always. And I think it, it's it's one of those things that I, I feel is absolutely critical to working relationships, um, particularly between sort of managers and subordinates or leaders of a business. I think if, if somebody was employing uh, staff for the first time, I would actually say to them, you know, as a as one of the first things you do, you need to sit down and work out with your employee how you're going to communicate with each other on an ongoing basis. And by that, I mean sort of, you know, it might even be worth discussing some ground rules between yourselves, but also, you know, m- make sure that you get time in the diary to sit down and have those one-to-ones, those touch bases. I know if you're in a small business or if there's even only a few of you working side by side, you might sort of think, oh, it's fine because I talk to them all the time. But the reality is, is, you know, we're all human. We all get caught up with the demands of our roles and the busyness and the 101 tasks that we've got to do. And as a result of that, I think sometimes communication gets um, put Lost. to one side. Yeah. yeah. And not seen as a priority. Whereas actually, I think it's probably the number one priority in, in, in the role is just working out how you're going to talk to each other. Because through that, an employer can set what their expectations are for the employee employee can talk about any issues or any further training or any support they need in the role and it's absolutely essential to build that trust up from day one of the relationship and that's what I was just about to say it's expectations assumptions and standards Uh, as uh, a next manager myself I know that my standards were pretty high and if I'm honest possibly unachievable for some people but because we were my standards and I wasn't trained in what I'm doing now, I probably could not have seen that. But you have to explain what the standard is. You know, someone might just see, actually, I'll share a story. I remember a particular employee who was on two uh, final written warnings for various things. And one day, uh, well, he knew he was on his way to get a third one and potentially the door too. And... I said to him, oh, I can't exactly remember what, you know, um, that he really needed to, to, to back up his ideas because he wasn't uh, going to last very long. And he said to me, but you never give me any praise. Now, bearing in mind that chap is potentially now on his third final written warning. Um, and I said to him, praise for what? Turning up? <laughs> and it was a bit that, you know, he, he, that was pretty much, unfortunately, the only thing that I could say I could praise him on because he, he, he was not doing a good job to my standards and he would not have lasted. But it's very, you know, obvious when you tell this story that to him he needed praise, again, even to this day, you know, what for? Um but to me, it really was not performing because it wasn't acceptable and up to my standard to be on three written, final written warnings. Yeah, and, and um, I think you quite often get to performance issues when there's not that open communication there as well. But it's it's definitely an onus on both sides of um, both parties to, to be saying the good and the bad and sometimes I, I I know what you mean I find it really hard I don't automatically uh default to praise it, it can be sometimes hard to remember to say thank you but again I think that's really important that employers do that and highlight when things are going well and also highlight if it's going well with other people so that potentially if you've got a team of people um you you can see what good behavior and good standards look like and good performance look like it's useful to have that illustration i think in place and i think also it's important to remember uh in, in the next breath that you know to some people a high standard is turning up unfortunately um <laughs> yeah. and, and it is you know and I think, yeah, and I would I would agree with you. I, I think I've had one of those people who worked with me in the past myself. And, you know, some of the things he did, they were outrageous. And he just didn't have the concept of that. But I think it's important at the earliest possible uh, opportunity to have that discussion about what is acceptable and what is not acceptable and what you're expecting. Because if somebody is new to an organisation or new to the role, I think there's a lot greater potential to change them than rather than if they're set in their ways. If they've been doing something a particular way for years, 
then it can be quite difficult to change that behavior sometimes. That's what I was just about to say, because I recall a couple of times walking into a, a new position and actually because people were so set in their ways, which incidentally, when necessarily the best either, but you know, for them, it was a challenge. It was like, well, we've always done it that way. And it's like, yeah, but not anymore because it's not efficient, it's not this, it's not that. And, you know, explaining and giving reasons. But I think sometimes people, well, people don't like change, do they? No, no. They don't like a new manager, whatever happens, because it threatens the um, status quo. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's human nature to be um, uh, cautious about change because you're never sure if it's going to be a good thing or a bad thing. But, I mean, that's the way people are. And I think... If that's the case, it's down to employers to be as clear as possible about any change that's required and and sort of give the rationale for why it's needed. I think the whole thing with communication between employers and employers, it's all going to be based around trust. Both sides have to trust each other. And that's got to be earned as well, which I think sometimes uh, people forget when you do walk into a new organization, you know, trying to change everything straight away is not really going to work. I personally feel I think it's better to take a step back maybe for three months and watch how people interact because everybody can be on the best behavior to start up with. And then actually you get to see their true colors. Yeah, absolutely. I think, although it is, again, it's difficult. So going back to the situation that I spoke about where there was a difficult mm -hmm. relationship uh, at the beginning of the podcast, I think in that scenario, it was really difficult for the new manager because she was coming in at a middle level. And, you know, she was very aware that she had some hard targets and she had to impress her bosses quickly and show what she was doing. And I think she felt under the pressure of that yeah. as well. And so maybe wasn't as sensitive to the situation as she may have been had she been more settled in the role and more yeah. confident about having proved herself. Yeah, no, completely. So what sort of other problems uh, do you get involved with? I take it um, discrimination? Yeah, absolutely. It really, um, I can get involved in anything where employees and the business are not working effectively together. So that, that can be anything from, you know, complex cases, bullying, harassment, discrimination claims, things like that. The basic um, performance management uh, where people are just not doing what they're meant to be doing. Sometimes it's as simple as you might have somebody who just doesn't turn up to work as <laughs> on time, or yeah. it might be that they've got a terror or a bad sickness record and the, the employee's losing patience. So we get a whole range of things, which at the root of it stems a relationship issue, really, with most of them. Yeah, um, I know the... Um time issue because i used to have an employee that seemed to believe that just for the fact that he started at half seven meant that he could turn up anytime he wanted from half past seven <laughs> as opposed <laughs> to starting at that time um do you think that sometimes like him for instance um employees or managers don't help themselves very much Oh, completely, completely and i think you get all sorts of situations where people don't help themselves so to give an example that's connected to that actually, we had a situation recently where there was, a, there was a, uh, an individual who was had a poor absence record and it wasn't an ongoing thing, it was just lots of days off sick. And so then he was invited into a disciplinary because the employers felt that it had reached an unacceptable level. And the guy just didn't turn up to the meeting. And you think that is never going to help a situation. Mm. If you confront... Uh, something that's already a potential conflict situation by antagonizing it further that is always going to make the situation worse and sometimes you do sort of I don't know <laughs> you want to hold your head in your hands thinking why have they done this it's only going to make the situation worse I mean I had a guy a um he could have done the job straight you know as like this is what's expected to do just do it don't cut corners right but he liked to cut corners. The problem with cutting corners, that it meant that to protect himself, he would have to go around the houses and actually made it more difficult for himself than if he had done it right the first time round. Anyway, he ended uh, another one, they ended up for a string of disciplinaries. And I used to say to him that, you know, 
he had the little black book of excuses. It, it was kind of like a throat chart. If she says this, I say that. If she says that, I point to this answer. And I was just thinking exactly what you just said. You know, why antagonize the situation? We know what you've done. Why can you not just, you know, accept it and move on? But people don't, do they? Not always. No, and no, and that's it. So however much I, I sit here and say that I think it's really important to have good communication and to build that trust up, the reality is sometimes it's not possible to do that. Sometimes you have employees where it's very difficult to trust them. And by the same respect, sometimes some employers, you know, you can't, <laughs> you know, they can't be trusted at all. And so I think in, in those situations, do you know what? Sometimes it's not always possible to completely solve it. And, yeah. And sometimes it's best that parties go their separate ways as a result. Yeah, and, and I think it's not a failure to not be able to find a, a, a compromise in this particular point, because actually sometimes, as you say, the only way is to part. Actually, yeah. like some relationships, to be fair. <laughs> and, and you know what? I think if, if it becomes clear that that's the case, from an HR perspective, I would say, you absolutely have to make sure that you do it properly and appropriately. And I think for me, one of the things that's really important throughout any, any, a, any process that you go through as an employer is try and make sure that every party keeps their dignity. It's, mm, it's really important definitely. that to me. Uh, so treat them how you'd want to be treated yourself. So even, even if you're having to dismiss them, just make sure that you do it in an appropriate way, which means that the person is i don't know say invited to meetings that are entirely private that the whole office isn't going to be gossiping about it make sure that you follow the process that you have laid down within your company make sure you give them warnings before throwing something in at the last minute so don't go straight from accepting bad behavior or bad performance for months and then suddenly go oh we've had enough of it, it it's it's always about that behaving with dignity and appropriately i think is, is a key for me and what about difficult conversations i recall one particular uh, incident where i didn't have to have a conversation but it was around body odor what would <laughs> you advise um for that particular kind of like very sensitive you know um talk yeah no that and i would agree that that is one of the most uncomfortable ones and i think um I've always joked with HR colleagues that, you know, you're not a proper HR consultant until you've had the, the question come to you about body odour and having to deal with it. I, I think, um, I mean, it is going to be tricky. But again, I think for me, the key to it is doing it in a way which retains the individual's dignity as much as possible. So again, don't go raising it in the workplace in front of lots of colleagues. You might have heard it all of your team complain about this person's body odour. But, but don't do it in front of anybody else. Take the person to a private room if you need to have a discussion about it. I think it's worth probing um, first in the conversation just to see how they are as a person because you never know, there could be all sorts of factors that's impacting them. So for example, is everything okay at home? If, if for any reason they're not living at their home address at the moment, it could be that they don't have appropriate access to washing facilities, either for themselves or their clothes. Um, find out if there's anything medical that, that's going on. Now, in a number of cases, that might not be the case, but I think you have to sort of approach it by being honest about what the issue is and also, um, making sure that you you take ownership for it it would make the situation worse if you say all your colleagues are complaining about your smell because they'll automatically think hang on everybody's talking about me but instead you can maybe raise it with a look i brought you in here to discuss it today because i've got sensitive issues and sometimes they're just not aware yeah. that they've got a problem and they might be just ashamed yeah absolutely and so You've got to be really sensitive in the way that you approach something like that. It's never going to be a comfortable situation for any of the parties involved with that. But again, it goes back to as long as you do it in a tactful and appropriate way, mm. hopefully something like that is not going to damage the overall work relationship too much. And I think also sometimes in terms of like obviously relationships in the workplace, it's 
There is a lack of understanding between the top and the bottom or the bottom and the top. I think that in some ways, um, you know, you get programs like Undercover Boss, who they, where they send the management to experience what's happening at ground level. And sometimes I think that they, they, they forget that without the ground fall, so to speak, there isn't a business, there isn't a, a company. And in the same way, sometimes try to um, they get these bright ideas that, as managers, you then have to implement, and actually, they're never going to work because they've been invented in some other country, and culturally, it's not going to work where you are, or it's just not going to work because of the nature of the work. And I think that's when a lot of the time the bottom or the ground falls does not understand how decisions are made up there because they feel misunderstood, which I completely get, and also um, then don't really buy whatever they're saying. Yeah, and I, th I think you're right. I think you can get a lot of problems in the workplace. And again, from, I, I know I keep, I'm sounding like a broken record. I keep going, it's communication, communication, communication. But I really do think that's, that's at the heart of it. So, and it's the way we communicate as well, because signing um, memo after memo after memo doesn't do it for people. No, I, and I would say, so if, if you're in an organisation and you're going in at a senior level or you've just been promoted into the role, I think it's really important that you know the people who work for you. And I mean, obviously it's going to take time to literally learn everybody's names, but do you know what, if you do, it, it goes such a long way towards building that relationship and trust with the employees that work for you. And funny you should say that, uh, when I, before I was promoted uh, to a managerial role, I was sent in office quite a bit away from where I lived. And I was asked if I could go there for four weeks to help basically sort it out. Uh, which I did, and I was outside having a cigarette, and some posh car came along, so I gathered it was someone, you know, that had a little bit of power in the organisation, and he uh, stayed in his car for a bit, I carried on smoking, and he came out of his car, and he went straight to me, and he shook my hand, and he said, thank you, Sophie, I really appreciate you staying here for four weeks, and I've come all this way, blah, blah, blah. And that meant an awful lot. And the reason why I actually was in this car, I'm gathering, assuming here, but was probably to, you know, ring my boss and say, what was her name again? Um, but that's fine because he made the effort. And I always respected him from that day until I left a few years later. Absolutely. So I think getting to know people is really important. And then I would also, again, time is always the issue. But I would encourage senior managers to meet with the staff at the front end, get their feedback on what's working well, what isn't working, how they improve, particularly if, if they're the ones that are talking to customers directly, whether it's other businesses or, or um, uh, you know, consumers. They're the ones that are going to be, know what the, cons what the customer really wants because they're going to see it on a daily basis. And they've got the rapport with them too. Yeah, and so they're going to know what kind of problems exist and everything. So it's really important to open up that dialogue. I mean, you mentioned Undercover Boss. And years ago, we had an initiative, one of the places I worked, that was called Back to the Floor. And I remember um, my senior boss came along and spent the day in the department that I was running. And he was literally answering the phones and sort of picking up HR queries. He kind of realised what we were dealing with. And sometimes if you had somebody who's there upset on the end of the phone, it could be really stressful. When we were trying to put stuff on the computers, the computer system wasn't working very well at the time. Mm -hmm. And it was a real pain. And so once he saw that himself, he was much more able to, to be our advocate, to fight our corner about the changes that were needed. Um, but I, I also think there's something there as well in terms of, so you were talking about um, how there can be issues with communication in both directions. Mm -hmm. I think it's also about, as well as employees being honest about the, the things that they're seeing and about what the clients are wanting, I also think senior leaders have got an uh, obligation to, as well to communicate things in as transparent a way as possible. So for instance, if they're having to make decisions about the business that might be unpalatable or difficult for people to understand, um, I think it's about being, again, owning the message and, and being honest about why they're doing it. Saying things like, I have to make these decisions for the business. 
because actually the business is not making money at the moment and this is why we're doing x y and z and and taking the responsibility for what they're doing as well saying we ha i have made this decision because of this and i think trying to communicate as transparently as possible again is it's going to help even with the most difficult of yeah and i think that one of the things that where maybe uh companies can go wrong i know i've certainly heard it around me and it used to wind me up is to use some sort of jargon um instead of using plain english <laughs> uh, uh, i mean there's one particular word cascade i just you know i used to hate that can you cascade to your teams and i i, I get the message i get what we're trying to imply but i just couldn't stand it what about you know talk to your people but anyway do you think that sometimes maybe with cascade and big words that mean nothing really do you think that sometimes we get a little bit of our common sense oh yeah absolutely because i think you know the bottom line for me is people shouldn't forget is it's a real cliche as well is treat other people how you'd like to be treated yourself and when people forget that i think sometimes they make some really daft mistakes and it's just forgetting that sort of common decency and just sometimes makes them act a bit you know do make do things that aren't good for the business yeah no completely well we're we getting towards the end already at what point would you say for a final question um if someone i'm not gonna say dissatisfied but maybe feeling a little bit left out or at what point do you think it's good to actually start exploring leaving a company or moving on because I think sometimes we can put that off for fear of change or whatever. But at what point do you think an employee at whatever level should leave? Um, I think they should leave at the point that they don't feel that they can improve it. Mm -hmm. and, and there is, I mean, it, it's, it's going to be different at that point for everybody. Um, and, and obviously, I think in some circumstances, people should talk to someone else in the organization so say for instance if somebody feels that they're being bullied or discriminated against they absolutely should speak to either their manager if that's a possibility if that if it's actually the manager responsible for it they should speak to somebody else senior in the organization or an hr function if they have one to try and resolve the situation there are, there's legislation in place to protect employees and also there's companies will have processes in place that that are there to protect them and to allow for issues to be aired without any repercussions. But I also accept sometimes it's it's not as clear cut as that. I would always say try and build those, get clear communication, try and build those relationships with your organization. But that's not always going to be possible. And so sometimes it'll be actually, do you know what the best thing would be to, to move? To go. Yeah, yeah. You can't solve everything and you shouldn't. And sometimes it's right to have a change. I mean, from mm. my own experience, just to give an example, my previous employer, I'd worked there for a really long time. And do you know what? I just felt myself that I was... Stagnating, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. And because I was getting a bit stale, I think it was really hard for me to, to probably give my best to that, mm -hmm. that organisation. So the best thing for me to do would be to move on because, you know, I was... I'd probably seen everything happen and <laughs> it's, it's so some, you know, I think it's a skill to actually sometimes turn around and say, no, now is the right time to move. I think it, it'd be better for everybody if I worked in a different organization. I mean, I recall a chap uh, when I was looking after uh, the mate stay in office and he just really enjoyed, he'd done the same job for 20 years. He'd been with them for about 20 years, if I remember rightly, he did the same shift. It was Saturday and Sunday daytime, and it was Monday and Tuesday night shifts. And he did this for 20 years, and I think he would have carried on for the next 20 years, but when we were bought by another company, which I remain nameless, uh, we, he left after a couple of years, and I thought for someone to leave, because it wasn't the job that was the issue, he loved the job, and he knew inside out, he was just one of these people that doesn't want any more than that, and that's fine. But the company was clearly, you know, the new company, so much, well, you know, he was so unhappy with them that he decided to leave. And I thought that said a lot about the new company. 
because for someone to go after what would have been over 20 years, you know, it, it's an awful long time. And it would have been hard for him to make that move. Yeah, ab- absolutely. I can, I can sympathise with some of that. And it's hard. But I think people are only ever going to be happy in a workplace if they work for an organisation and work with people that they have similar values. values beliefs, yeah. standards. It doesn't necessarily mean you all have to be this sort of <laughs> identical blob of people. You know, mm. you definitely want diversity. But you have the same vision. Sports and everything. But, but on the other hand, if, if you've got, say, say for instance, if you've got strong morals, but you're working for a very unethical company, you're never going to be happy there, regardless mm. of how nice the people are that you're working with, because there's always going to be that, that, that dissonance between what you believe and what the company believes. So I really do think it's, it's um, you know, there will be times that, that, that there isn't a good fit. And if that is the case, you need to go and find a better fit. On, yeah. Well, Tracy, thank you so much. It's been really nice talking to you as always. Thank um, you. Thank you, uh, everyone, and you, obviously. If you enjoyed the show, then please subscribe, uh, give us a review, and then come back for the next episode. Thank you.